Today we're going to be talking about pressurizing versus vacuuming your resin for dice making. There are other videos that talk about this in a general sense, but I want to talk about the positives and the negatives of each one for doing it specifically for dice making. So before we get into that, I need to talk about what pressurizing is versus what pulling a vacuum in a vacuum chamber is, or else this is going to be too hard to understand. Now I'm going to do this in the steady crafting style and do it by hand because I think an explanation is needed first before I go into the machines and the technicalities of it all. So in resin or in silicone, this is the same concept, but we're going to be talking about resin. Imagine that these circles here are bubbles in your resin. Now, for pressurizing, it puts outside forces acting on your bubble, so much so that it becomes a smaller bubble. So this top one is about a one millimeter size bubble, and in scientific terms, this one is what it becomes afterwards, way less than one millimeter. It still has forces acting on it, but it becomes so much smaller that eventually, boom, you can't even see it, right? So pressurizing is taking this large bubble in your resin, making it way smaller, so much so that you can't see it. It becomes too small to see. Now, it doesn't remove the bubble at all. It's still there. It's just essentially negligible. Now, that's great, but you'd think that why don't we want to remove it, which is what a vacuum does, right? So I'm going to draw extra bubbles here. These are representative of all the bubbles in your vacuum. A vacuum pulls these bubbles out. It's only got one force acting on it, and it is pulling those bubbles up and out of this cup that I'm drawing here. So it will fully remove the bubbles from your resin or from your silicone by pulling them straight out. Now you'll notice here that I'm drawing a second cup. This second cup has no bubbles in it. That is the difference. It fully removes the bubbles. This top one up here has a lot. This bottom one here has none. But there are downsides to this based off of the material that you're using. Resin is sticky. So let's get into showing you now that you know how a vacuum works and how a pressure pot works. Let's get into showing you exactly why a pressure pot is better for dice casting. Now I've talked about building a pressure pot like this one from Harbor Freight before in one of my videos. I'll link that up in the top right right now. I use this little lid in here as a flat surface for it because it's not flat on the bottom. But this is essentially the same thing for all different types of pressure pots. So let's talk about the lid here because it has a good example of what this is. It's got this gauge on the top that shows the PSI for how much pressure is being put into there. This little air valve is where air gets pushed in and increases the pressure on the inside because there's too much stuff in there, too much air. A vacuum is the opposite and the needle here kind of helps because it's on the right where the other one was on the left. This is reducing the PSI in there. It is literally sucking all air out of it. That is why it's a vacuum and not a pressurizer. It actually doesn't even have to have the locks down because it suctions itself closed with this kind of rubber gasket lid around the top, right? All it has is this outlet thing where air can be pulled in from both sides and this little tube inlet here where it suctions the air actually out from the inside. Now I can talk about it all I want but the best way to show you is to give an example. So we're gonna make some resin here with this Art and Glow resin and make sure you follow the safety information on there like wear gloves and wear a respirator rated for fumes. But I'm gonna mix up two equal parts and we're gonna put an equal part of resin into the pressure pot and an equal part of resin into the vacuum chamber so that I can show you the differences. I mix this up for a while and I purposefully mix it up in a way that will add a ton of bubbles in there so that we can see the maximum effect. So you can see there's a lot of bubbles in here and if we get something clear, that's a good thing. I'm gonna make both a set of dice in each one and just some clear resin cups so that you can see the difference. So I take some pipettes and fill up my dice molds. That still leaves plenty of air bubbles inside there. You can see here with a little bit of a close up of the dice. And then I pour out equal parts of resin into both of these little cups so that it is a completely fair test and that there is still a ton of air bubbles on the inside. Let's start with the pressure pot. So I take one of the clear cups and one of the dice and I go ahead and put it inside and lock the lid down. Make sure to lock it really tight, connect my air compressor up to it and start filling it up. When I pressurize my dice, I do anywhere between 30 and 40 PSI. Anything above that doesn't really change anything and anything below that doesn't really work. Now we can move on to showing you the vacuum chamber. I'm putting a paper bowl down because I know what's going to happen here in just a moment. It's going to get messy and uh, I'll show you why I have this idea and thought. So I put the cup in and I put the dice mold in there. This is the main point of the video. This is why I want to show people that a vacuum doesn't work for resin but a pressure pot does. So I start the suction from the vacuum pump and then I 
close off the valve here on the side so that it starts to create a vacuum inside of here. Now I'm going to show you real time what happens. This resin is sticky. It is pulling all those bubbles up and out, which is great. You don't want bubbles, right? But if you do this with your mold, excuse me, trying to make the light look better, all of these bubbles are going to up and overflow out of your molds. You will have a sticky mess on your hands if you do this. Now you can pull the vacuum ahead of time. You can put a huge cup and just use whatever resin is left over, but one that's troublesome and that's tiresome and depending on your resin you might not have a long enough working time to make that work so I pulled the vacuum on this I let it run for about 20 minutes and it still was bubbling up at the very end of it so after letting the resin cure in the vacuum chamber and in the pressure pot overnight these are the final results between the two so you can see the resin here overflowed all over and luckily both of these things are kind of barely stuck in there and silicone doesn't really stick to resin so I'm able to pry the molds out of there. Glad I used that paper plate so I didn't have the cleanup. Now, let's take a look at the results. Again, you can pull your own pump ahead of time, but if you try and do it in your molds like this, this is all that was left over. I barely am able to get maybe a third of the dice filled with the resin that was in there. Everything else overflowed, covered my mold, and went around the outside. Now, this one I filled with about 20 milliliters of resin, and you can see there's maybe 10 milliliters left. So half of my resin is just straight up gone from the cup. You saw it overflow. This is all that's left. Now let's compare that to the pressure pot and the results that we got from there. First of all, no real cleanup necessary because it all goes down inside, and it is a fantastic crystal clear flawless result right it pulls everything into all the different spaces and you still cannot see any of the bubbles on the inside perfect set of dice every time essentially you you can guarantee your results coming from this and you can see here in the cup i also have essentially a completely clear resin set uh, no complaints here I, I think it looks perfectly fine when compared to the other resin you can see it still did go down below that 20 milliliter line that i had them at but that's because there's now space where those bubbles once were the dice look essentially the same in terms of clarity the sharp edge is a little bit more clear but that i think has more to do with the sharp edge mold than it does the other dice specifically so that is it that is the difference between pressure casting and vacuum chambering your resin again and i've said this a few times already you can vacuum pull your resin before pouring it but you risk putting additional air bubbles back into the resin that you just pulled the vacuum from and you've got to be worried about your working time as you're pulling it so I say go for pressure because apparently you can also pressure cure your silicone to get no bubbles in that as well. I haven't tried that myself, I plan on tackling that one in a future video when I make some new molds. So thank you for watching, I hope this was at least somewhat informative or maybe at the very least entertaining. Hopefully this informed your decision, again a pressure pot can essentially do two jobs where a vacuum chamber can do one, so my money's on the pressure pot if I was going to buy something and start fresh again. You don't need either but they just make life easier and I'd go with a pressure pot. Maybe subscribe if you want to learn how to make some of your own custom dice. I do a lot of that and I also do other stuff on the channel as well. So check that out if you haven't. I hope that you have a fantastic day and thank you for watching.